Hey, kitty girls, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, where we are discussing All Stars Season 8. It's our second episode of this particular uh, review. We are going to be going over episodes number 5, 6, and 7. These were Snatch Game of Love, Joan, The Unauthorized Rusical, and Forensic Queens. And for those of you that are just joining us for the first time, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Enjoy. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that were patrons, you already started hearing some of the shade that was going on in the very beginning, because we got opinions about the latest stuff that's been happening. Um, yeah. By the way, it's Sunday, June 18th, 2023, just in case you're curious. Um, and episode seven just aired a couple nights ago uh, on Paramount Plus or wherever you may be getting it. And yeah, like I, <laughs> <laughs> I love the delay. <laughs> well, that's I mean, it's like, you know, I'm trying to I feel like I've got to watch it to keep up because people really have opinions, but it's not must see tv to borrow a phrase you know Ooh. it's it's if you want to know what's happening because you know people be people be expressing things online and they're not even spilling tea or like or giving things away they're just making comments and i'm like uh, oh okay what happened today <laughs> right right and you're like right. you're like something something's happened or some things have happened and people people right. but they're not naming anybody they're just like yeah rah, 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 rah. And i'm like oh i mean okay. I, I appreciate the spoiler free like tea that's being filled but i kind of want the the full like spill like give me give me the full i don't want the sugar free i want give me the sugar like just hmm. pour all of that shit into into that right yeah yeah anyway no i can understand that so anyways uh yeah there's there's a lot for us to discuss in this case um you ready to dive into our first segment let's do it okay racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win or the one that production decides should be the winner Fresh out the gate. Fresh out the gate. Right out the fucking gate. You're like, and staff. <laughs> oh, you didn't see the shiv? My bad. Yeah. <laughs> so there sorry, you're go. just bleeding out all over the floor. I know, right? God damn. <laughs> so our first that segment. Like a snatch of the wig and a staff in the back. It's like. <laughs> well, that's what you get for super glued your wig down, girl. Sorry, I scalped you, but that's just how it works. <laughs> my wig <laughs> anyway anyways uh yeah our first segment we call it put the pedal to the metal i just drove right over the bodies just like just, <laughs> just yeah just <laughs> have, have no care have no concern leave leave them behind no it's right so in this segment we go over our overall thoughts we have three categories the first one is serves these are the positive things that we happen to enjoy in these particular episodes and then we've got oh baby swerves which is not <laughs> what uh, just happened i did not swerve around those bodies or those potholes <laughs> those things that we were not a, a fan of and then we got nerve and baby nerve can be good or nerve can be bad like nerve as that oh honey she had all the nerve in the world to do that and we applaud it or you must be joking bitch because that's 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 just a travesty just just you know it's not good mm -hmm. so i'll be curious to see what we have to say oh my first up for the serves damon who are you giving serves for so i'm going to give serves to joan the rusical hmm. and in a whole i really enjoyed it i thought it was really good knowing mommy dearest in the movie and knowing joan crawford and all of the references that they made everything that they did in this moment was spectacular mm -hmm. and i was quite impressed i will say you know um it's a musical it was one where they actually sang quote unquote i mean auto-tune is a thing but still um <clears throat> and overall i just personally really enjoyed the show i think they did some really good moments i appreciated michelle's comment about it being like a's and a pluses as opposed to like B's and A's and A pluses, like giving it kind of a 
it was really good and we're kind of splitting hairs as it were. Mm -hmm. So kudos to everyone. I feel um, I, I, I will own, I don't think the person who won should have won, but that is me saying and spilling tea. But um, I did appreciate the musical overall, the musical overall. I enjoyed what they did. I enjoyed the music choices. Uh, I like that it kind of ran a really fun gamut of decades of music. We kind of got some 70s, some 80s, and some like 90s, like alt rock. And then, um, yeah, I, I, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Of the musicals that we've seen, of the musicals we've had on the show, um, it's up there. It's a good one. It was a good one. I enjoyed it as as the musical. Um, I do think they've been getting better, but I'm we we've like we've left behind the highest like of highs in terms of like productions and fun and memorable things. So I don't know if this one really is gonna leave a mark necessarily, mm -hmm. um, other than the confusion I had in watching it, just because the the music was just so whiplash like all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um and I absolutely do not understand the concept of why Country Hoedown was chosen for the Alexis Michelle like you know, don't fuck with me, fellas. Right, moment. personification yeah. like that yeah. thing of all time. I was like, that I, should have been a dramatic ballad. But like, I think what do I overall, know? Overall, um, I liked it. I again, like I said, it wasn't like a me. It was a me. It was good. It wasn't amazing. I wasn't like, ooh, they're like, look at that. And this is really cool. It was a fun little mishmash, a fun little tale. Realistically, if this had been an actual like musical just you know if we were actually calling it a musical and doing all these things i think it this would have done with a lot more book like story to mm -hmm. kind of bridge all the pieces together um clearly this is not meant to be like going on broadway kind of thing but right it needed it needed a bit more like again everything needed more like, I will say that much. Like, scenery and sets and some of those things, like, some things could have been amped up and given so that we could get more, why are we doing it in this way? You know, for example, the country hoedown moment, um, that does feel like it comes out of left field. Um, and there's no, there was no real way to show that shift because if you're, if I'm remembering, it went from it just it it went in a real direction, and I was very much like, uh, what is this? Right, like the, it's like there just was no good natural lead into it. Like I was just right. thinking, like what we're missing is the board room conference yeah. table, like with all the dancers right. sitting at it in like suit jackets or whatever and chairs, and then like you know magically the chairs get whisked away and they're like Chippendales yeah. and you know like yeah. and she gets up on top of the table like you know yeah. and and like no like all of that just none of that movie magic yeah, was there it, obviously it needed, it needed it needed it definitely needed the table. I think that would have really been a really good idea. I think and this is me again over well, not overthinking it but like thinking about it going you could have done like a table lengthwise across the um, mm. front of the stage so that all the actors and stuff are like dancers and then um, Alexis kind of in the middle, mm -hmm. almost like a Last Supper kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And then the don't fuck with me fellas kind of whatever we're doing and then gets up on the table and the guy's stripped and the, the whole dance is done on the table. Right, right. Or the table just like magically falls away to the front and then right. like now it makes sense why we're on the stage anyways. Yeah, no. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I realize we're picking it apart, but the reality is like, it just goes to show it wasn't that spectacular. Yeah. Um, I will say this, you know, like at least it was good music. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, you know, the contestants, the Queens did fine. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so I agree. I think really well. Yeah. So there's that. Gary, how That's about fair. you? Um, well, I have two serves, and it's both for the same person. I mean, we've already brought her up. So Alexis Michelle, this bitch, this bitch has been coming hard for this gig. Like, in this particular season, if there's anybody who's truly competing, and I think competing because they want to win and doesn't expect it to be handed to them, like other people who uh, their initials are KM, 
just saying, then I feel like that, what? <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> Ooh, no, she better don't. But she did. So. <laughs> but she did. But she did. She said it. I said it. No, um, Alexa Michelle, for two things. Um, the first one, her B Arthur impression and snatch game of love talk about a master class in like mm -hmm. delivering and looking like and personifying the mm -hmm. the character like and in this case she is b arthur as dorothy in the golden girls but like i mean it's just it was so good like i yeah. just it was a it was a really good choice a lot of choices were made a lot of research it feels like she researched a lot absolutely and did some she did her homework well and she had a lot to live up to she had done liza minnelli before and had done chris jenner in the musical you know in the musical and so i think she was like you know i i've already not necessarily peaked but i've performed really fucking well mm -hmm. and not everyone expects me to do it again and i thought the b yeah. arthur impersonation gender illusion like it was just it was amazing um, I, I just was really taken with it. And right. um, and I think if there was ever a second place, I know Jimbo won that Snatch Game of Love and that, that episode mm -hmm. overall. And I genuinely think if it was if that if it had not been her, it should have been Alexis. Yeah. No, I, I, I agreed that there were some some definitive front runners and Alexis was was in there and I mean, you know, it, 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 it is difficult. Jimbo is a steamroller of a, of a contestant queen. She is just, like, slaying and bowling over everybody. No matter what you do, um, un unless it's actual lip syncing slash dance, she's, you know, killing it on, <laughs> on all the other stuff. That's not shade. It's not shade. It's fat girl. It's fact. So far, she has not been able to lip sync. Although, I'm just going to call it out now. I don't know if we're going to discuss it later on. I think she's playing a game. I think she's playing a game. Oh. We'll come back to that before we wrap up this oh. episode. Anyway, so uh, the second thing for Alexis is... Talk about... You You know what I'm going to say because you see the talk. Talk about drag. I mean, drag is many things, but drag is subversive. Drag is like uh dirty drag is like in your face and the fact that alexis michelle but drag is not a crime the fact that alexis michelle decided for the most recent episode i mean talk about let them do anything they want category right. is miss fill in the blank and i was like huh like i didn't understand what was said at first and then when they started coming out and i was like oh you could literally invent anything right like and i and i'm wondering if well no because we because if you watched untucked you got to see the fame game so you know what other people did so nobody did misunderstood right like yeah, one of the most classic like things yeah yeah so nobody instead did. anyways alexis michelle came out as miss man pig as a like a pageant winner and mm -hmm. The fact that she came out in that title in a jockstrap inspired gown and then had like the dress dipped in like like yes. ca canary yellow <laughs> dye to imitate like urine like weeping up the gown mm -hmm. and then had made a train out of red hanky paisley. I was like, this is a fucking kinky bitch. Like, like we and I have discussed this and critiqued it before. Yeah. It's been a number of seasons since we've made this comment about if you're going to do kink, you do kink right. You don't go just, like, buy some, some pleather and throw it on and, like, mm -hmm. ooh, look at me in my mirror cap and look at me with mm -hmm. my boots and, you know, and my vest or whatever. Because you look boo-boo to fool because uh -huh. it doesn't look real and authentic. But this bitch... I was like, if I didn't know any better, I think Alexis Michelle has been right beside the trough in an eagle somewhere I in the mean, nation. I, I she might live really close to like she's in New York. I think there's an eagle in New York. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. And I almost said Ram Ramrod, but that's not in New York. But again, there is a there is a knowledge. Yes. 
I will put that word in there. Um, there is a knowledge, and there's a part of me, and I'm going to say this, and it's going to be full, like, I hope tea, I feel. There's a experience. Like, we know. We know. <laughs> she done done our, he, Alexis, has, 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 has some, some experience. I am not at all, I would not at all be surprised if Alexis is a kinky bitch. Like, I'm just, I, it, it would oh, not, oh, right, right. It would not surprise me in the least if I went to New York, me and Jim, you know, mm -hmm. say honeymoon, um, and went to New York and went to like the kinky bars and just happened to like run into mm -hmm. Alexis on a table, legs up in the air, and then someone with a glove just. Because red means fisting, y'all. And she had a, like, she had a, like, a big, I don't think it was latex, but it was a black glove on one hand. Oh, I missed hand. that. Oh, she had a glove on one, long glove, like, um, like, opera style glove, red, a black glove on one hand that looked kind of like it would have been, like, a latex glove. Mm. It may have been one. Um, and... I got what it meant. Mm -hmm. I I knew immediately. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's how we we're going to play it. Um, Jim and I actually did talk because we watched um, uh, Pit Stop. Mm -hmm. And um, have they done for Ashley Photo Review? No, not, never, not for this one yet. Not yet. But there was a big part of me that was sitting here like, I appreciated the gown. I would have made some edits. Right. And the big one would have been just focusing on one kink, per se, and then also to kind of add to the man pig moment of it, get a little dirty up here, like have some hair like loose, like and the oh. ground tilted to the side, and like right. like like you like yeah you won, but you were in the middle of of getting you know fucked or something over here in the corner. Yeah. Before the before the announcement was made, like you found somebody, you eyed somebody in the in the audience, not a judge, because that would be wrong. <laughs> and eyed somebody in the audience, and they just you just walked over and just oh. anyway. <laughs> right. No, I agree with you. Like like from the neck up, she was pageant kind of delivering mm -hmm. perfection. And I do agree that was a little off for like the theme of of the look. The only other thing that I kept thinking about was I wish that the dip. Uh, the dye ombre from the bottom of the gown upwards was better. It, it didn't have a hard line, but it definitely wasn't as like subtle and gradient as yeah. I would have desired. Yeah. Um, a, it, we, we, Jim and I came up with so many ideas. We thought about the idea of like the, having the tits just being big, bigger. So it didn't look like it was balls coming out of the sides of the jock strap. Um, oh my we God. thought about, we, we really, one of the big ones we both came up with was, um, taking like she just it felt like it was tacked on the red hanky thing. Correct. If we're gonna do do that, then make it make it yellow. Keep it all in one theme of a of a kink, and then have it attached to the to the to the jock, because that's where a, that's where a hanky would have been if you were just wearing a jock. It would have been connected. Mm, to, that's fair. Yeah. To the to the strap, as it were, and then made that yellow yeah. as like a like a train or a cape. But that's, you know, kudos so, yeah. to her. I really do appreciate it. And I talk too much about kink because. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. So with that, you want to move on to swerves? Sure thing. All right. <laughs> You're up, girl. <laughs> Got to call it out. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I almost I almost wanted to go get a prop for this moment. I swear I almost did. Um, Lala's reveal? Question mark is what I'm calling out. Mm. Um, big swing and a mix here, miss here. It genuinely was, she took, not even, I don't think she made this thing. I feel like this was literally, I went to um, Walmart or Joann's or something like that and found one of those fleece throws that was in the same color as my outfit. Maybe she went to Joann's, whatever. And then just wrapped it around myself, 
around my outfit so you couldn't see it. And then that's the reveal. Man, that's that's not even a that's not even a that's not even a like a no, that's not a reveal. That's not a reveal. That's that's a I'm taking a piece of fabric and wrapping it around myself. Like the idea that I saw from every other queen was the outfit kind of shifted to something else. Granted, Sometimes it's literally obvious, like you threw a robe or something on and then took it off and it was something else. Jessica Wilde. Um, but Lala, I love you, but the couple of these runways you've had, I've kind of been like, where was your where was your head at? Like, were you just like, right. okay, I really like this outfit. Let me bring it and then make it work somehow. Yeah. No, it it it, yeah. it it definitely kind of spoke to me as not a lot of time invested, and and I get it. Like, there's not a, a good amount of lead time mm-hmm. from when you get the call to when you show up. So you know, and and you yeah. hopefully already have a clear slate or schedule available to go. And that's that's really yeah. what that this particular outfit said to me, because I did like the the what was revealed quote unquote yeah. but yeah it was just you know like i have yards of fabric and i'm just gonna like wrap it around and then kind of woo this is, this is what it's like <laughs> and woo <laughs> <laughs> that's what it felt like yeah like here's me going around doing the thing and then oops i just yeah no and i just something structured is what it needed yeah. I would have been fine if this was your only reveal. If you had done something kind of structured or tailored to where it ripped off the sides, because you had that big ass bow, and I get that, that's probably hard to cover up. But if you had done something where the bow was kind of sticking out and then ripped off on both sides and then you had the outfit underneath, I would have been okay with that. I would have felt that was better and maybe well more well thought out than this was. Mm-hmm. This just felt like an afterthought. Yeah. This no. felt like I had this outfit and... I had all this fabric left over. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. What about you? Uh, Ooh. Oh, mm. yeah. Let's go ahead and do this one. Okay. I'm, I, I'm hoping we're in agreement on this. Uh, my yeah. swerve. Kahana, your quote unquote, Miss Tired Ass Showgirl. Runway look. There was nothing tired nor ass about it. Like, was it showgirl? Yeah. Like, it's not this stereotypical Las Vegas showgirl with the big feather plume headdress and the blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. We've already seen that this season. So this was From... different. But. Was it, though? Well, no, a different as far as a Vegas showgirl. Like, mm. like it, it was a gown with a lot of beading. You looked pretty in it. Um, and that was fine, but like the title meant nothing. It made no comprehensive sense. I was like, tired ass showgirl. Like, so that it's in the title. Make fun of the title. Make it that you are like, you know, we've seen it before, but I'm sure you could have like classically made it that you were like in a satin gown that looked like bed sheets and you had a pillow. Like, you know, and like, do you know what I mean? Like, actually yeah. play it up instead of this. Yeah. Our beautiful look that makes no comprehensive sense to the theme, yeah, like to what you our, decided to go with. If you're gonna do tired ass showgirl, do like tired played out showgirl. Get like the feather, like like get a feather cap. Like again, go the like extreme. Mm-hmm. Get like the feather boas, but it's missing a bunch of plumage. Like it, like this is I've had this for fifty years, and I'm just now like I keep coming out as a showgirl, but I ain't shit. Um, have like the big feather like back thing, but it's down on the floor and drooping because it's you know, and then slowly saunter onto the stage and just sort of like, and and then like once you get to the hit, like you're gonna do this and like slowly make your way over because this is the move you do every single time you're on stage, like play into the. Right. I'm a showgirl, but I have been on the around the block like 200, 300 times. Right. Like what she I just realized that what you're describing, David, is she didn't she didn't do the thing she should have. She didn't go against type and she didn't go ugly. Yeah. Like you could have like put on like a a, a padded 
outfit and like had your hip pads like falling down lower than where they're supposed to be. Right. You could have like put some brief lines in your makeup to make it look like you're older without looking right. like, you know, ridiculously. Yeah. So like there, I agree with you. There's a lot of things that could have been done. She could have cosmetically like modified her arms and her hands to make it look like thinner, like, you know, that crepe paper, you know, kind of like yeah. skin style and, and she, yeah, she, there's a ton of things that she could have done. And I agree in that direction of what you're describing. I'm just yeah. like, so the the concept to me was just like complete bullshit. I was like, okay, yeah. so you have a sash on a beautiful gown and this is what you call it. Yeah. You had someone, you had that gown already. Mm -hmm. We already know, we doesn't know that you, you had that gown already and you were like, okay, let me find a, let me make, have someone make me a sash that works with this gown. Right. That's it. Yeah, that that it was it was it was bad. Total swerve. Total swerve. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. So with that said, uh, nerve. Um, okay, I think we're both going kind of in the same direction with nerve. I'll let you go first. Um. Uh, so I wrote down why are these girls giving up, and I'm going to talk about the other one later and it's going to be a totally different kind of feeling in that one. But okay. in this situation, I'm going to talk about specifically Kahana and, uh, and a, an extension kind of Alexis. Mm -hmm. um, this was a weird, this most recent episode was weird. Mm -hmm. Let's just point, put that out there. This was a really weird episode. They were doing an improv challenge and it feels like there was a lot of, whatever kind of moments and Kahana was one of the big ones for me in this episode where she felt I get it it's another acting challenge it's something you're you're you've not done really well at this season or sounds like period and then we've had acting challenge acting challenge etc and you've not done well or you've been in the bottom forum or whatever and I get it. That's that's a lot going on. There's a lot of um, like like anxiety because of the concept of what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And it felt like as soon as you heard, and I saw it in her face. As soon as she, as Rue was announcing the the challenge, mm -hmm. it felt like Kahana was withdrawing mm -hmm. and withdrawing. And then they were picking people. And tried to pick parts, and she was kind of like, I don't really know what I want. And I get that. And she was getting there, and she was getting there. And then she finally, like, I'm just going to leave. And I'm like, girl, what's going on? What's going on? And I, and then Alexis, on that same token, Alexis, during the part like cho choosing, Again, kind of, and I say this giving up meaning because she gave up the part she wanted, and then she started crying about it, and that to me felt almost like a cop out, like the tears, and and playing to that moment. Why did why did you give up if you wanted it so badly? Why why did you why did you make why did you if it got you to the point of tears? then why did you give give it up so quickly? Quote, unquote, because, again, editing, production, bullshit, you know. Well, so I have thoughts on that very last part. Yes? I don't think she, she started breaking down because she gave up the part that she wanted. I think she possibly started breaking down because she realized that she made a mistake in giving over the part that she wanted. And because Candy was like, no. And that was the end of it. Like, and Alexis did a good job at the beginning of, of calling her out on that and being like, but that's not how this is. Like, you're not willing to consider anything else. And Candy's like, I don't care. And I think that really kind of shook Alexis because she was like, what the fuck? But instead mm -hmm. of getting angry about it, I think she got upset about it and she yeah. cried because she was like, there's yeah. no winning like there's yeah. no there's and, no way for me to come out of this positively because I was the good person. I gave up the position that I wanted because I thought that was the right thing to do. And this fucking bitch won't give up shit because she's like, fuck all y'all. Like, I'll take the thing that I want. And that's the end of it. Oh, my eyes roll back so hard in my head. 
Oh, that hurt so much. Anyway, like I, it, 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 oh, it, it, anyway, it pisses me off. Cause I get it. Cause I saw that Alexis, cause again, she did it twice. So we know that, right? She gave up the security guard part. Mm-hmm. She gave that to Lala. And we know why she gave that to Lala. She can, we can say it all we want. She, she wants to fuck a lot, Lala. Like we know this, right? We've seen this. Happen. Or, or she wants to be fucked by Lala. Whatever. But, right. <laughs> Kai Kai all the fucking round. Anyway. Um, and anyway. Sorry. I'm going to talk this to the real for a second. I was like, that would, be a bit. Nope, that would be a fun thing to see. Only fans. Um, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. But having said that, um, she had already kind of given up one part. And then she came to this part that she kind of wanted, and then she gave it up again. Right. Um, and I agree with you. Candy felt. I I have I will okay fine cards on the table, and I think you're going to be mm-hmm. talking about this in a second anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, cards on the table. I don't give two shits about Candy. I'm so fucking tired of Candy. I have not been a fan of hers for a while, and I am. Speaking of tired ass, I'm tired of her ass. To quote the great Heidi in Closet. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. Yeah, so that's 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 kind of it for me. I'm kind of done mm-hmm. with her. And her I understand. Shenanigans. So with that, I will concede to you to continue the conversation. <laughs> Gary. Um, nerve. Candy's self-centered ego girl. I'm I'm over it. I'm done. I didn't like it the first go round. I don't like it in this season. And the thing is, is the reason why she's on here is because she makes good television. Right. That's what this is all about. She makes right. good television. Because look like, at us. She's eliciting like emotional responses from us because we're like, like you are a cunt. End of story. And you don't care. So as far as I'm concerned, you could spend the rest of your goddamn life living and sitting alone in the VIP, bitch, because nobody like you. Nobody wants to hang out with you. Nobody wants to be friends with you. Based on what we see, you're miserable. You're horrible. People don't care for you. Your makeup is ugly and your wigs are horrible. There, I said it all. (laughs) But outside of the drag race television show... Candy may be a very pleasant person, but what we get, right. what we get edited, what we get presented with, I'm like, mm-hmm. you're just miserable and rotted. I don't like you. Don't want to like you. Don't want to see you. Don't want to whatever. If there was a traveling show and you were part of the troupe, I get up and go to the bathroom when you come out on stage for your number. That's how I feel about it. I have no interest. Sorry. You, you just, you're not represented in a positive personification. By any yeah. means, and I just don't, I just don't care for it. And, and the thing is, is she seems to lack compassion. And this episode, this last one, was like the penultimate of like the most twisted, self-centered, narcissistic bullshit. When she gets up and leaves, and she's like, "I can't. I'm not dealing with this." She's like, "She's like, what is with this? Like with the waterworks and the blah blah blah." And like she just like totally chews up Alexis and spits her out in that moment and just is like fuck this I'm I'm, I'm like yeah. I'm leaving the workroom because I can't yes. be around this and I yes. was like wow yet she will be the first one to break up aren't we sisters aren't we supposed to be nice and, and kind to each other fuck her right no 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 like, no, no, no. I, I, oh. I agree there's a reason why I, why another contestant left the entire competition and it's like, oh, but she's the first one, and then we get two more that are, like, upset and bothered by it. And then we have this whole thing that happens in this episode, which I'll talk I about have, later. <laughs> I have a – yeah, I agree. Like, I just – okay, so here we go. Full tea. Here we go. Usually from season to all-stars, mm-hmm. we expect to see growth. We expect to see change. We expect to see something that redeems them in a sense. We were talking about this in in, um, Mm pre-show. Redemption is kind of one of the things why a queen would come back to kind of redeem themselves after their season. Right. I feel 
and I'm saying it with that, I feel, Candy feels, that she has nothing to redeem because of where she ended up in the in her last season. Right. She was technically second place in her season. So she thinks she did really well and just didn't quite make the crown, which, fair, what have you. She did having win for good that, reason. That part. Um, <laughs> having said that, If I had been Candy, I would not have come back. Right? She had every reason not to. She did really well in her season. Yes, she didn't win, but she did really well somehow. She did um, second place on her season, despite everything that happened that season. Right? Then she's done, Oh, I mean, she's done stuff i don't know i don't follow her i don't particularly care to follow her but that's kind of where i'm at like you did right, right you did okay there's not been a lot of bullshit as far as i can tell regarding her maybe here and there but you know whatever she had no real reason to come back right. other than to potentially get a crown but based on what i'm seeing this season of all stars eight i am not seeing her getting the crown i'm not like, I don't see mm. anything in particular because, to me, point blank period, she should not have won Joan Narusical. That should have gone to either Alexis or, oh, I had someone else. Where's Joan? There it is. Um, who left it on this? Yeah, it's, I, I, I personally really like Lala in that episode. Mm. Personally, now was this that crappy runway? Was this reveal yourself runway? No, no, this was neither. That was Jones. Right. So, right, right. And again, but again, I think she nailed their look. Where was there? Was, okay. Oh. I know, I know where you're gonna go on this oh. side tangent. The judging, <laughs> the judging. Yeah. We just expected more from you. Of all the contestants, you're the one that is the epitome of Grace Jones, and you picked something like this. We just expected more from you. It's rare. Who the fuck? Who the fuck put that in the earpiece? Who well, who said, said that to them to make them say that? Because it was complete and utter bullshit. I was like, right. oh, right. okay, okay. So this outfit Whatever. that was pretty much, even though it was kind of a pleathery or, or latexy kind of like right. version of the outfit, but even it was kind of dead on the outfit mm -hmm. with the little small changes. And you're like, I wanted something better. Like, what the fuck? Where? Like what do you what 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 better quote unquote did you want from that? Right. Anyway, did you want me to go like to the artist who made this outfit for Grace Jones and ask for a reproduction from them specifically? Right. Is right. that what you wanted? Right. Anyway. Oh, that pissed me. Well, no, and the reason why we're so hot about it, Damon, I think is because it was utter bullshit from the judging. And here's the reason right. why. I don't think it mattered what Lala wore. They weren't going to give it to her. Right. So I that's why her. that's why the feedback is bullshit. Yeah. I loved her in in, in Joan. Anyway, give not that saying all uh, all that. Huh, <sighs> back to candy. Fuck her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just it it's just not enough. Yeah. I'm not as impressed. I'm not getting a lot of interesting things. I'm seeing a lot of similar things from her. And again, I appreciate the body positivity. I appreciate the sex appeal that you have. And I appreciate your your openness and frankness in a sense. But like you, I am getting that Tandy is lacking in empathy. Right. She is being very, like you said, being very self-centered, being very much like, this is my show to win. And I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say it again. I bet what Heidi accused her of saying was true. I bet she said that. I bet she totally 100% said that. And and only reason she's disagreeing that she said it is because it was off camera when the camera was off. That's the only reason. Well, if we pay attention to the edit... Mm -hmm. Candy says point blank to Alexis's face. Did I say, quote, 
blah, 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 end quote. And Alexis says, no. And I was like, okay, there's the flaw. Because Mm -hmm. Candy just asked you a point blank question about Mm -hmm. a quote. And instead of you, Alexis, saying, no, that's not the wording used. That's not the phrase. That's not how it was stated. She just said no. And I was like, oh, whatever. Like, I have no time for this, like, this romper room bullshit that, like, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. (sighs) Anyway, that being said, fuck Candy. I love you. No, I don't. Um, I appreciate your ability to be a personality on TV. That's saying a lot. Because I'm not even willing to say that. Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. You ready for the next segment? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, now that we've been slinging so much of that around, let's move on to our next segment, which is uh, snaps and eye rolls. The hits and misses, otherwise known as the highs and the lows of these particular episodes. Um, so, David, what was the, what was the high point for you? What you giving snaps to? So, I um, again, I, I mentioned that this was I was coming back to this mm-hmm. in a sense regarding to my girl's leaving. I am actually giving snaps to Heidi's departure, mm-hmm. and why am I doing that? Because the reason why she chose to leave, in a sense. What we've seen, what we've heard, things she said, because there's been a lot of stuff if you follow social media and what have you. Um, Heidi chose to leave because she wasn't finding joy in this anymore. Right. And that is sometimes the most important reason to leave. Why be here if I'm just going to struggle and I'm not going to be into it and, or whatever reason. Like, if I'm not doing this for myself, then why the fuck am I doing this? Yeah, it's a check. Yeah, it's coin. What have you. Yes, it has the potential of, of getting you gigs and all that shit. That's fair. And that's wonderful. But so does this moment when she left. Um, seeing, I saw someone almost in like in like 10 15 seconds break everything just broke everything broke Hmm. you know she had this confrontation with kahana about snatch game and we have learned apparently that there was a lot more that was being said that we didn't see um in the edits um which is understood we know how tv works um that Kahana was feeling very, like, attacked, for lack of a better phrase. And, again, that's sort of the name of the game, a snatch game, just being honest about it. Um, Supposed to be banter. Now, if it was all banter towards her, I get that that would have sucked. But there was that moment where the conversation happened. Then there was this, I'm going to be seen as a liar because... I repeated to someone what I believed I heard. We can't confirm or deny it. You know what happens. Um, and I'm essentially being called to my face that I am wasn't being truthful. Mm-hmm. That I somehow, for some reason, made this up for what? No one knows. Right. And then you have to then continue into the competition with that hanging over your head. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Like, and I I will say this. Heidi was doing really well. But for whatever reason, actually, we know the reason. We all know the reason. It wasn't getting judged. It wasn't getting the positive that I saw and was seeing. Mm -hmm. I saw so much growth, so much change, 
from Heidi in her season to Heidi now. Mm-hmm. These looks, this these these details, all of the things that were going on, even the fucking gap tooth like lip like um, image that she kept using, I thought it was cute. Would I have liked to have seen it in every um, outfit? Absolutely not. But I, she got to a point where she had it and she was good. Like it made sense to me. So her choosing to bow out um, made sense. She was in a, a situation where probably, maybe, she saw the writing on the wall. Mm-hmm. She knew, whether it was true or not, that she wasn't going to win. And maybe that's why she's like, why stay? Why fuck with my mental health in this um, pressure cooker of a competition and and try to get through it for the sake of, again, a check, maybe doing well, maybe getting a win somewhere down the line. But if you've just done these past few episodes and you're kind of like, no one's seeing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. then, yeah, like, why would I? Why would I stay? Why would I stick around? Well, and on top of it, she, I think, really felt like mixed up pretty good about the fact that she had close confidants in two of the queens mm-hmm. in the cast. They had just toured together and had bonded really hard. And now one of them was showing their true colors mm-hmm. and not being like supportive of them or willing to like discuss it instead they decided to to turn it into more and i feel like i feel like some of the things that have happened in the season have been for the cameras um and that's bothered me and i feel like this whole situation between her and jimbo and and candy and kahana like i feel like that was for the cameras in some ways but it was authentic the problem was is that someone was not going to let go of their viewpoint mm-hmm. or or shift their character in any way. And that's where I was like, okay. Yeah. And so she chose to leave. And I was like, all right, good on you, yeah. girl. Like, yeah. like as – and I've seen it said already, the moment I saw it happen, I was like, oh, so she Bella decremed herself. Like, you know, she was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> She's, she she it. She was like, instead of putting her name on her own lipstick, she was like, I'm out. Bye. I'll just yeah. peace. I'll leave. No mm-hmm. big deal. Um, and the thing is, is that the biggest part was that that I think concept on the Internet came from the fact that they gave her the ability they they played that, you know, one of the things she said was like, I got to I came what I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to prove that I've like, you know, ascended and I've done better with my art and I've already done that. And the judges aren't appreciating it. And I don't understand like, Mm -hmm. what's the point of being here. And this is just a mess and I don't like the vibe or the energy. So deuces. See you later. And and again, like she was in a, there was, there was (sighs) to me there, there, it felt like she wasn't going to win. Yeah. Like, and yes, it's early on. I get it that it was it was four episodes in, and like episode five is when she left. Like I get it where you're in the point where you're already a few episodes. We know there's not going to be that many because it's not as many queens. But there's not been any. Unlike the all star, the all winter season. No, everyone was be, there were eliminations, and I think she mentioned this in in an interview that she had that. She thought it was going to be like All Stars Seven, where mm. it was all winners and everyone's going to get a stick, stick around, and all that stuff. And I'm like, I don't know who told you that, but if that was something that maybe had been said to you and you thought that was going to be the case, I'm sorry that it wasn't. Right. And maybe you were misled. Um, but at that point, you were you were four. It was four episodes in, and we know she was having issues in I think episode three. If I'm remembering correctly, um, is that the ball going backwards in my notes? Yeah, because yeah, it, so it, we see an untucked where she's already like, yeah, in a I mood. Mean, yeah, so it's entirely possible, and and it's been said that she had been feeling this way for a while. It was just the her making that choice to finally like 
take the turn and do the do right. the Arthur. Um, yeah. I give all props to Heidi for choosing yourself over a competition over this show. Mm -hmm. Like that is my big kind of moment here because where I've been, like I said last time about why a girl's given up, this wasn't to me felt like giving up. This was, I'm choosing to leave. Mm -hmm. Then try to maintain like whatever is going to happen. Like maybe seeing the writing on the wall and maybe being truthful to how you perceive the, the perceive the competition mm -hmm. and saying, this ain't, this isn't going to be it. This is right. going to be, I'm not going to get what I want from this, which sounds a little self-centered, but truthful. Right. So why stick around? Agreed. Yeah. Speaking of which, Gary, <laughs> ditto. <laughs> I mean, I, I really didn't have anything necessarily in snaps, but the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I completely agree with you. Like, Heidi, Heidi, Heidi's going to take care of Heidi. Mm hmm We already know that. She's already said that. Before. Correct. She said that in her original season, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what she did in All-Stars. So, yeah, props to her. And, and that feels, that's something I think some of the queens need to understand. Because we already know, hey, y'all, some tea that has been spilled. Um, particularly by um, Evie Oddly. Um, the show don't give a fuck about you. Like, they're, they're producing the show to make money off of you. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. Like, that is, at the end of the day, that's what it's going to be. So, who cares? Like, ooh, this is going to get, ooh, I'm getting heated just thinking about this. Who cares about your mental health? Who cares about like you going into debt trying to get on the show or trying to do the show and then you don't get an opportunity to show any of the shit that you've done. We don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't care about it. All they care about is you coming on the show and producing good television. Yeah, I mean it, it it's entertainment. And if you're mm -hmm. not if you're not understanding that, yeah. You don't have that same viewpoint then yeah. it does make it a very different experience. And I will say this, this is very true now more than then. New seasons, I think you need to start understanding. I get that this is a platform and this is a way to elevate your status in one way or another. But think really hard about what you want to do and what you have the potential of giving up and losing to do this show, this show. Mm -hmm. And this is me, like, yeah, sitting here talking about this show and putting it out on the internet. I get it. But you have to think really hard as a queen considering doing this show what you have the potential to gain and what you have the potential to lose. Right. And we know more about now than we than the queens did before. Because NDAs have... have, have um, come and gone like right. uh queens have chosen not to ever come back for one reason or another or have been removed from ever coming back we know all of these things now we're in this is all stars eight but we just completed what season 15 am i wrong, mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah so 15 years eight all stars we 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 have a knowledge now before you get on this show to make a decision on what you want to do. Right. Enter at your own risk. <laughs> so true. Very true. Yeah. All right. So with that said, moving on from Snap's eye rolls. Damon. Don't hurt yourself. Actually Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna do one. I have, we've talked enough about Snatch Game. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna cut that. Um, James's elimination, mm -hmm. James Mansfield's elimination was a crock of shit. Like, okay, um, 
I didn't get it, I wrote down, like I started this and said no, and I was watching All Stars or The Untucked right after, and I was sitting there like, I'm still upset. And I wrote that down. I literally wrote down, I'm still upset. And I know why, because I think of the queens, especially in that episode, I felt James did really well. Was everything perfect? No, I get it. Outfits weren't fitting properly, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But I, I, I just, I don't get what, I don't see what they were seeing. And by they, I mean production where they felt that this was the logical choice to, like, mm-hmm. eliminate at this point. Um, and then seeing, like, everyone had voted for her, and I'm like, I get it. Kahana had a win, but she was in the bottom, I think, three times by that point. That's the sign. I hate to say it, but I don't care how many wins you got. If you are in the bottom three, four times, sometimes that's a sign that it's time for you to go. Mm-hmm. And I love Kahana. I appreciate her. All And kind of you, too, were in a similar situation where you were off early in your season. James was off first episode, our first elimination, and then Kahana, like, second or third, if I'm not mistaken. And you had something to prove. You had to redeem yourself. And I think James did a really good job of redeeming herself. She proved to me because I personally was not the biggest fan of hers. Mm-hmm. But seeing her, um, her YouTube channel, watching her in other things, uh, I personally grew to like her um, mm-hmm. and him, his, his boy side. Um, and kind of learning a little bit more about them, seeing things, I'm like, I see you, kinky bitch. I see you. Like, I see you. And it, it just bothered me that you got eliminated. I don't I think you got eliminated too early. Did I think you're gonna win? Absolutely not. I will say that truthfully. But I think you had a little bit more to show. Um and I think you did a really good job with what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Was this the night of a thousand Grace Jones's runway absolutely amazing? No, but it was really good. And I don't see I don't see what the judges were seeing. Like, I saw some of the little things, like the detail, there was a hole in the back for some reason, which I was like, okay, that's weird. That was a, that, you know, why didn't you fix that in sewing? Or maybe it came undone. I don't know, whatever. But it felt, that that was the only kind of, like, flaw I saw. I get that they're saying it wasn't tight enough, but, like, is that really a thing to critique so much heavily on at that moment? Mm-hmm. But that's me. So my eye rolls are to James's elimination. I think it was a it was a a product 100% of production. Mm. I agree. I think that's fair. I have one thing to say though. Go ahead. I I agree about being upset that she that she left when she did. I think Hannah should have gone in her place. Mm-hmm. And James would have gone later. But mm-hmm. but the fact that she was eliminated, I was like, oh, this is gamesmanship. Mm. This is this is this is them playing the game. Candy eliminated her because she saw her as competition. That's fair. She's a yeah. strong contender. She she can do comedy. She can sew. She can be funny. Like mm-hmm. she's not the best dancer, but like I think Dancy was. I think Candy was like, nope, too too much of a of a wild card. For me to to be able to deal with, and it remains to be seen if Jimbo's going to make it. Because if Candy wins and Jimbo's in the bottom, I think that quote unquote rumor uh, of all that bullshit. I think it's true, and she will eliminate her. She'll just bounce yeah. her ass out and be like, "Bye, yeah. can't, 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 can't have you around." That's fair. Um, so I was I was shocked to see that all the contestants also picked James, but again. I think it's gamesmanship. And part of the deal was I paid attention um, on the fan wiki today when I was looking. I noticed that it that all of the queens that could vote since about episode four have consistently group voted 
together. It hasn't been, I think, since episode three that there was sort of a divided vote. It was pretty Fair. consistent that they're all voting the same direction, which says to me either A, it's obvious who should go, B, they're talking to each other off camera and colluding and making the decision on who should who should go. Mm. And I think it's probably both of those are coming into play. Yeah. So. I think so, too. I agree. I think there's a... There's been... I think there's been a definite conversation. Yeah. Or co- collusion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Well, I already had my tirade earlier, but this is a whole different subject. Uh, but this relates to everything we were talking about. I am giving eye rolls to Rue's disconnection from reality. The fact that Mama Rue had to come into the room, everybody was like, oh my God, this has never been done before. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, Mama Rue got to gather the girls up and all this. And I was like, really? Really? So... Yes, we have two queens that are, like, upset about how things are going, and they're kind of, like, alluding to the fact that they might be leaving, which might also be for television, which it might also be a bit drama, which might also not be reality, because, Kahana, do you know what you are? You're not an actress. You're not an actor. So when I'm watching you try to walk across the room and, like, take your, like, pink like you know uh cart and like move it across the room and then like you did a double take like looking to see if somebody's watching you do something no girl no girl you're not a good actor you weren't really gonna leave that was what bothered me about that whole thing anyways back to my point rue comes in the room and is like okay we're gonna have a sermon i'm gonna preach i'm gonna gather you up and i'm gonna get you right okay whatever does she does she remind them this is a competition and to not throw shit away yes fair here's my question for the world where the fuck was mother rue when heidi left oh but that was different like she chose to leave for her mental health and you decided not to talk to one of your girls about not leaving? Well, that seems suspicious. Instead, you decide to come in because now maybe it's viral. Maybe, like, this is spreading amongst the queens. And they're all like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to leave. No, I'm going to leave. No, I'm going to leave. And now you don't have a show. Now you have less episodes, which you can't get ads for. You have less sponsorships. And the whole production starts swirling and going sideways and down the drain. How interesting. I'm right. just saying. So I said, I, I immediately said, like, we were wa- when we were watching it and said, I'm like, oh, here comes Mama Rue. Because guess what's going to happen? If another queen left, that's one less episode. Well, Unless there's they... already Scuttlebutt online trying to figure out how the season's going to play out because there are five queens left. And then the Fane Games is supposed to start voting on Friday, July 14th. Is that after the season's over? Like, how does that work? So, like, are you supp- – like, the whole point was to probably announce it in the finale, like, who wins the Fane Games. Ooh, let's look at this, shall we? Let's but, do some math. So, Go ahead. like, this coming Friday, the 23rd, one more queen leaves, so that takes it down to four. Right. If they do it again on the 30th, it takes it down to three. Right. If they take do it again on the 7th, that takes it down to two. Two. Which means the finale would be the two 14th. Queens. Yeah. Which is the night you start voting? Yeah. To pick the winner of the Fane Games? So that... something, something's going to happen. Right, right. And that's where that's where uh, the Scuttlebutt Online is like, wait a minute, th- this season isn't making any sense. Like, is there 10 episodes? Are there 12 episodes? Is it 11? Is there 13? Like, nothing nothing seems to be coming together. So maybe they're going to skip a week. Who knows what the fuck's going to happen? It's, it's, you know, anyways, the point is, is that Rumaru comes in and she has the speech or whatever. And what bothered me about it is I was like, you don't get it. And you never will now. 
You have ascended. You have moved on. You are not the same drag queen that you were in Atlanta. You are not the same drag queen that you were in New York. You are not the same drag queen that went back to Georgia and then back to New York and then out to L.A. You are none of that. You are not. No, you are so far removed from the streets. You have no concept of reality. You do not understand the day to day living of the contestants and what's going on with them. So you can't relate. Mm. So the fact that you come in and decide to talk to them and the queens are all like on camera, like, oh, I was really impressed that Mama Rue came in and talked to us and got us right and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, bullshit. It's utter bullshit. She has not been there. She has not been Deanna Troy counseling your asses since the moment you arrived in your first season, let alone an all-star. She is not a nurturing, you know, kind of person. She is not Mother Teresa. She is none right. of those things. Right. So... She's very, the person uh, who's in charge of stuff, who has coin coming in because she built an empire. She's going to keep your ass there because it's going to help her to continue to make money. And I realize that's very divisive to say, and it's highly opinionated because I used to really honestly kind of look up to Rue in a way. But as time has gone by, I've become, become less and less enfranchised. Like, I just kind of don't care because you know what you are? You are a rich black man who has not really understood what it's like to be any of the contestants that you have on the show now. And that's the tea, sis. <laughs> so I just I, no, I'm not saying I, I'm gonna stop watching the show. I just am not invested. I'm like, okay, right. that's great. It you just, came in it, in your suit, you made your little speech and blah 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 and we moved on. And then Kahana went home anyways, which I said out loud, just for the record. So in the episode she says are you like you get it? You understand? Are you in it? Kahana's like, yes, ma'am. And out loud, I said, good, because you're going home. Because <laughs> that's exactly what that moment was. I was like, this is how this works on this show. Has no one been watching? The moment you change your thing away from your thing, you go home. Stop putting those stars on your face. You go home. Stop behaving that way. You go home. Could we please have a different kind of hair? You go home. Could we see a different side of you? You go home. Quit wearing corsets. You go home. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. Stop trying to please them and do the thing they want you to do because your ass goes home. So in this case, are you sticking around? Great, because you're going home this episode anyways. Like, <laughs> you just need to stay a couple more hours, bitch, so we get all the ad revenue dollars. I realize it's very cynical, but anyways, that's how I no, feel no. about that. It, it, like I said, it's the tea. It's the tea. And I get it. Like, I was... Watching that episode, I was well, this last episode, this most recent episode, and I was watching it and I was kind of looking at what she was saying and how she was saying it. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down one of the things she said Don't let your feelings sabotage your experiences. Which is fair. And I get what she was trying to say. So part of her preached her sermon was don't let these feelings in the moment take away from the overall picture. It's kind of what she said. Like meaning like, yes, you're feeling shitty right now, but yeah. like you might not feel shitty in like 20 minutes or an hour or what have you. And then you'll feel really silly. And I kind right. of get that, got that. But that statement when you start really thinking about it, is complete and utter horseshit. Because how are you how how are you supposed to deal with this? Because what you're what you're actually saying, Rue, is think logically about the end goal as opposed to reacting emotionally to this moment. You're wanting the queens to go right. and think about like Think about what the show will do for them, which is nothing, um, as opposed to having these feelings in the moment. And I get it. We had Heidi leave, and we know, know why she left. And you have another queen saying she's leaving. I said, put in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, this is going to fuck me up. 
That's the difference. Rue knew that it was going to fuck her up. That's why she came to outside, and that's why she came down the steps. I'm a little surprised she didn't send Michelle, but she, I think this was meant to be, again, entertainment for a reality show, because mm-hmm. if Michelle had shown up, we would have been like, oh, it's Michelle, what the fuck does she want? Rue had to show up. Because if it had been, say, Michelle or Carson or Ross or somebody like that, a judge that, you know, really isn't, for lack of a phrase, supposed to be watching the show, it would have been a different story. Because that person doesn't normally, quote, unquote, see it. We know that Rue is around. Well, and production tells her what's going on or as as they feel it's necessary. And it was super obvious that production was like, okay, this is what's happening in the workroom. Mm-hmm. This is a potential problem. Yeah. Because we, need you to come we got two process. queens that are upset, one of them possibly leaving, and that might lead Again. to another one leaving. Yeah. yeah. So when a, when a fourth of your cast ups and leaves. No, we got a problem. Well, yeah. So no, yeah, it was so. Anyways, I just felt that she was very disconnected from reality, and it, like it was like, all right, well, that's all fine and dandy, yeah. and you know, yeah, did nothing for your reputation. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. With that. <laughs> so speaking of reputations, I'm sure from listening to this episode or watching goes, you have things that you might want to say in response, and there's ways that you can do that out there. You can go visit our blog at cubsoutloud.com. You can leave us a comment on the post or you can actually send us an email comes out loud at gmail.com you could also uh call us leave a voicemail we'd be happy to play it or at least listen and discuss it uh and to do that you dial 361-265-8255 that's 361 col talk you could also uh find us pretty much anywhere on most of the main things uh we're not on the tiki talks because we're old uh but in terms of social media, just type in comes out loud and you can find us on there. If you want to join our Telegram chat, uh, you should be able to search for COL Drag Race um, and join the conversation on there. Um, if you want to know what's happening with us when it comes to us recording being live for the main show, go to bit.ly backslash calendar dash COL. If you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. The first one is to go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We have a whole series of new shirts that we came out for designs. Um, Damon's happened to hold up our uh, one of our coffee mugs um, that happens to be a dual tone one that the inside matches to the handle um, in that case. So there's a couple of different items. Uh, both of us are not wearing our, our usual attire shirts today. Uh, Damon is promoting the Haunters Against Hate. Drag is not a crime. Uh, shirt design from Paul Lanner and the lovely folks over there that we very much appreciate them at that nonprofit. Um, and honestly, I need to do laundry. So there's that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you also want to support us, uh, you could go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for a dollar a month or more, you can uh, be a patron, be supportive of us. It helps keep the lights on, as we like to say. Uh, and you could then also get the uh, extended versions of these episodes. You get the bookends, the pre shows, and the post shows in, in the. Uh, mm video and or audio feeds or you could just go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud and send us a tip one time donation we'll take the coin we very much appreciate it thank you <laughs> when it comes to podcasts you can find cubs out loud drag races its own feed pretty much anywhere that you listen and download to your podcasts damon if folks want to find you online where would they go if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theater cup 79 that's t-h-e-a-t-r-e-c-u-d 79 our most fair related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm-hmm. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. Um, I do have a Twitter profile I created, gerber 73 drag which is pretty much where all drag things go. For the most part, that helps keep it uh, insulated and fenced off so I don't get spoiled. Although this season, well, anyways, I don't know about the spoiling. <laughs> Just saying. And with that, uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks. I don't know if it's going to be the finale. It doesn't seem like it. We'll see how it shakes out. Uh, but before you know, we'll be back to, uh, to discuss more of All-Stars Season 8. Ooh. And with that, we'll talk to you later, kids.